My talk this morning uh, is maybe foundational, and I'd like to talk about the success, the potential success of South Africa. And uh, to a large extent, uh, we all know we live in a very complex, changing world from a geopolitical perspective. Countries on the ascent, there's a shift to the east, China is rising, the BRIC countries, Brazil, Russia, India, and China are on the ascent. Um, and of course, the fundamental question is why should South Africa not be a country that takes a leadership role, that rises to at a rapid rate, and takes a leadership role in the world? We have the capability, we have the fundamental ability, we have a whole lot of assets that we have at our disposal. We see now with the Soccer World Cup that we have the ability to perform at the highest level, and I think that's critical. Yet having said this, it seems clear that we are dogged by kind of negativity, issues that, you know, will we survive, won't we? Can we sustain what we have? Will it continue? There's this amazing binary nature about South Africa. And so my hypothesis this morning, I'd like to share it with you, is that these issues are attitudinal. Our problems are attitudinal. We have amazing fundamentals. And as leaders, government, business, civil society, we need to focus on liberating an attitude that's positive and conducive to a successful country. We did some studies at Discovery that I think are quite revealing. What we did is we looked at Time magazine. Now, Time is a fantastic journal. I don't think there's any bias. I think they wish South Africa well. There's nothing in this at all. We just chose Time magazine. And we looked at the last three years prior to the World Cup of every single Time magazine article. We found there were 77 articles about South Africa. It's, it's pretty substantial. Of the 77 you can see on the screen, 57 of them were negative. They focused on the usual issues of violence, HIV, AIDS, political instability, racial tension, etc. Quite amazing. What's more worrying is, in fact, the images. If you look at the actual images, you'll never, ever find a positive image. What you'll find is a poor country. You'll never see Santon City, people sipping coffee in Melrose Arch. You'll never see a highway with a car driving down it. What you will see is what you see on the screen. You know, kind of a country in need of aid, a country in need of help, instability. That is how we framed. And it's difficult to break out of this. Now, not to say that that isn't a reality in South Africa, because we know that is. But there isn't a balanced view about our potential. If you look at uh, how journalists write up South Africa, this is a fantastic article that I think was in Business Day, certainly in the Financial Times, uh, by Alec Russell, where he talks about almost a confession about being a journalist that covers Africa and South Africa. And he makes the point, this was during the World Cup, that kind of there's just a process when you write about South Africa. You know, you focus on the usual themes, you know, crime, inequality, self-enrichment, racial tension. That's what you do when you cover South Africa. And that's the difficulty we have. So all of these factors tend to conspire and ultimately lead us to a point where we question our future. And that's a problem. That's a real problem. And the effects in our country are absolutely devastating. You know, you can see it in, in different walks of life, and I think it's a massive, massive leadership challenge. So when you think, certainly in our, in our business and in our neck of the woods, in healthcare, the effect is devastating. Take doctors, they're hugely demotivated. Is there a future, isn't there? That binary question drives them to leaving the country, not practicing in South Africa. That's a real, real problem for us. You know, that despite all the complexity about doctor immigration, there are no formal statistics about where they've gone, what they do, what drove them away. We're working now with some of the universities and medical schools on this very issue, but we've done some work on this. It's amazing, if you look at all the medical graduates since 1980 that we've produced, only 53% are practicing in South Africa. It's a terrible statistic. In fact, you'll see at the bottom left-hand side in the gold, 18% have formally immigrated, but we've tracked down statistically 28 to 30% who are practicing somewhere overseas, we think. So nearly half the doctors we've lost. The effect is devastating. Devastating to our country. If you look at the public sector, we all know the public sector is going through a very difficult time, debates about NHI and all kinds of things in healthcare, trying to find a way to make the public sector, public sector system work and offer a safety net for all South Africans. That's critical to our future as a country. But if you look at what we've lost, if you look at the slide there, there are about 32,000 doctor posts that we need. We only have about 11 to 12,000 doctors operating in the public system. If those doctors that had left worked in the public sector, we'd easily cover the requirement. In other words, put differently, had we not lost these people, these valuable people, it's possible that our public hospital system could be exceptional and of great quality. And I would argue that a functioning public sector system is critical to our future. I'd also say to you that doctors tend to be hugely influential. They are leaders of their community. People go to them for advice. For Each doctor probably influences hundreds of thousands of people. 
So a demotivated bunch of professionals that don't feel there's a future are devastating for us. We've proven as a country we have the ability to operate at the highest level. I think the FIFA World Cup showed that clearly. I mean, a World Cup is an extremely complicated, interconnected economy that you need to put something on of that capability. Telecommunications, transport, infrastructure, logistics, healthcare, policing, it all has to kind of work together and coalesce to be able to develop something that's very, very special. We've managed to do that, and it's remarkable how well we've done it. And therefore, it illustrates, no matter how you cut it, we have the ability as a country to operate at the highest levels. You remember the press coverage prior to the World Cup? We'd never pull it off. It's not possible. Every government had health warnings and safety warnings. We had the huge indignity of it's possible we're going to have to move the World Cup to Australia, which really impresses South Africans in the main. But there was that kind of mindset. Yet you wind forward a number of weeks, and you look at the, the, the research done, it's remarkable how well we actually did. When you survey individuals and tourists who came here, typically approval ratings were 70 to 90 percent. But I think what we need to be remarkably proud of, and proud of our government, proud of business, proud of every single thing, how we came together to put something on it, the performance was remarkable. Just some of the data here, if you, if you do the studies, you'll find that the two seminal World Cups prior to ours were Germany in 06 and the US in 1994, which, as I understand, broke all the records. But if you look at the infrastructure requirements, it is quite incredible. The US needed nothing. They had the stadiums, they had the transport, they had the airports, they had everything out there. Germany, almost nothing. Two new stadiums needed to be built, which they did, do in, in, they did very well. South Africa, we needed a huge amount. Six new stadiums. An entirely new airport in Durban, two major airport upgrades, an entire sort of public transport system, the, the rapid transport system in major cities, the Gaut train between the airport uh, and Johannesburg, a massive, massive undertaking. So we've done remarkably well. Our challenge is the future. And there is no reason why we shouldn't grow quicker and become more prosperous than those other countries. The potential is remarkable. And so what we need to do, four ideas, when we sit at the end of that line and peer out into the future, four things that I think we should be thinking about as, as leadership. Number one, we need to have vision. We need to set bold vision out there, but like Singapore has done. Because what vision does is it draws a line and people look up rather than looking down. It reframes effectively how people think about things. A bold vision is critical. We saw the power of that in the context of the World Cup. We've got to do more of that. And we often hear, you know, we need to grow our economy at 6% a year. That's not a vision. That's a threat. Right? We need a vision that's inspiring country, as leadership, as business. We need to think about that. Secondly, we need to build on our strong set of values. I think the rainbow nation, the quality of kind of celebrating our similarities rather than continuously highlighting our differences is critical. We need to make people feel inclusive, regardless of their race group, their gender. They need to feel part of a community that they welcome here, that it's a special place. We need to be tolerant of differences and somehow celebrate what makes us, what makes us similar. We need to be disciplined. We've got to get crime under control. We've got to focus on corruption. Those are critical things. They're unacceptable. We have to deal with them. But I think discipline is not just about getting those things right. It's about how we live continuously. It's about the symbolism in our society. I would say to you, things like potholes in the roads are terrible for us as a country. It's not about the practicalities of what they do to your car. It's the signal that they send out. And later, I don't know if Mr. Giuliani will talk about it, but one of the great stories about New York is the no broken windows. In other words, one of the ways they've got crime under control was to create an environment where they didn't tolerate any sloppiness at all. It creates a message to society. We need that discipline. We showed during the World Cup we can do that. We need to do more of it. And then a fourth point, and the point I made before, I think we need to build more skyscrapers. We need to be bold. We need to be cavalier, not cavalier in an ill-disciplined way or a risky way, but we need to think big, not be so rational. We need to reach and push our points hard. And in building an organization, building a business, I think those are critical. I think from a country perspective, they're critical. And from a behavioral economics perspective, I think they're also crucial. If you go back to my idea about the rationality of people and how they are motivated, bold vision reframes us from a poor country in need of aid, ultimately, to something that's going to thrive. When you talk about discipline, it creates a message in society. We talk about skyscrapers, it talks to relativity. I would much rather be in a country that's poor but on the way up than a country that's rich but on the way down. It just feels better. That's how humans are. And so that skyscraper is a critical issue. So let me end off by saying that I think we live in a very special country. There are real threats. But the choice is ours as leadership, whether we thrive or we don't. And we do have the fundamental capabilities to build a country that's as great as any other. Our problem is attitudinal, and I think that's very, very easy to change. Thank you for listening to me. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.
Oh,